Okay. Mary. Hi, Sarah. How's it going? <laughs> um, pretty good. Pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Okay, good. Doing all right. <laughs> so, I, well, I'm, you had mentioned to me in a text earlier that you might be feeling slightly nervous. So, I'm feeling a little nervous. So I've not really done much of this thing before. Yeah, I get it. Um, but I did want to share one thing with you, which I think should probably make you feel a little bit better about yourself, because it would oh, probably God. make anyone feel better about themselves. Oh, bring yeah. it on. <laughs> okay. So here's what I just did, like 10 minutes ago. Uh, well, earlier today, I, um, I was eating some almond butter on a knife, like having a snack, and like I left it on the kitchen counter, and, um, and then, like, I don't know, maybe like a half an hour ago, it was time to feed my cats, and I was like feeding them, also using a, a knife, like, you know, putting the food on the plate and stuff. So then, right when I was cleaning up after dinner, I was like, oh, there's the almond butter, I'm putting it away. I was like, there's the knife on the counter, and, I, and then, like, it had a big dollop of almond butter on it, and I just was like, Duh, and I put it in my mouth. Turns out it was cat food. <laughs> Like uh, now, I am pretty confident to say that I've done the one thing I've always wondered about. Uh -huh. You know, how was it? Um, what was it like? It was. It did taste sort of like pate. Like it was like kind of liver <laughs> flavored. It was and what, very. What cold. kind of? What kind of um a flavor cat food did they say it was? And did it taste? As they you know what, Sarah? I what? think it's chicken flavor. So that makes me wonder. <laughs> not taste like chicken? <laughs> it not taste like chicken. Which is a weird thing because <laughs> most of the time people say that things taste like chicken. It tastes like chicken. It tastes <laughs> like chicken. <laughs> but what? That's true. But I just wanted to share that because like pretty much if you didn't do that, you pretty much probably have your shit together. Because that's like one <laughs> Well, I don't know about that. You, right? you, I that you probably have your shit together a little more than me. You know? so <laughs> yeah. don't, don't be too nervous. <laughs> well, I still have to feed my cats, so we'll we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll do the same accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd always kind of wondered what, you know, have you wondered what cat food tastes like? I mean, everyone yeah. wondered. Yeah, I've wondered. I remember as a yeah. child once wondering what dog food tasted like. And I had, a little, I had a little bite. What did you, do you remember? I remember it being very, it? very dry and, and not particularly good. Yeah. But. It's kind know, of depressing. It is. Actually. Yeah. I feel bad for these pets. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Anyway, also I just spilled my tea all over my pants. So that's kind of cool too. Yeah. Um, going, going well today. It's going pretty good. <laughs> Um, so anyway, we're doing a podcast thing. This yeah, cool. we are here at uh, Talk House. Um, yes, Talk House. And, and I have to say congrats on the new record. It's really great. Thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate that. Um, and also congratulations to you are in order for the reissue of Mountains. Thanks, Sarah. I mean, on Matador, is that correct? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Awesome. And when, when does that come out? Um, in January, I think. Oh. Yeah. And your yeah. record came out a couple weeks ago, right? In October, yeah. End of October? Yeah, October 16th, I believe it was. I was checking out the, um, that live video you guys shot at Jay's studio. It was awesome. Oh, thank you. It was so yeah. good. It was, it was such so a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was hard to figure out like what to do in terms of a record release since we can't do shows right now. Right, right. Yeah. So we were kind of trying to figure out what to do. And then we heard mm -hmm. Magpie Cage was a little bit in trouble and having, you know, struggles like a lot of places are having right now. Yeah, right. Trying to stay open. So we thought it yeah. would be a good, good thing to do and get in there and try to support Jay and the studio because it's such a great place. And yeah. We recorded the record as well, so it was fun to great. go back and play those songs again. Yeah, it sounds great. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I love that studio. He's yeah. he's awesome. Yeah, great um, guy. It was it was really, yeah. It's you know we did our first record with him as well, 
And so it was fun to go back the second time and just kind of feel like we knew what we were expecting this time and um, right. go back in and just get it all cranked out and, and get it done. And he was great and he's so easy to work with. And Right, yeah. I know you've done some stuff with him as well. Yeah, yeah. The last x head striker we did up there. Um, and yeah, we're the first time I was ever in that building actually was like, 1993 because there used to be a different studio in there called Oz right um, like, yeah you what did you record in there yeah. I did a record with Nathan Larson and Joan Wasser and Kevin March called Mind Signs of the Mind in like early 90s yeah but it was weird when I went back because I hadn't been in that in, a, in that room in so long but the drum sounds are so good in there yeah also it's a great room, but also Jay is also super, super good at drum sounds. But um, it's definitely like the best sounding drum room I've ever recorded in, I think. It's so great. Yeah. Here's my hat. I don't know if you can see Ronnie, but. Uh, is, Ronnie, is Ronnie the cat of yours that likes to sit by the guitars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's here right here. Hello. <laughs> Very cute. And he has, he's the white arm. He has one white arm and one uh, brown arm. <laughs> <laughs> he's cool. He's, um, yeah, he's, he's got a good look. It's like asymmetrical kind of 80s. But um, yeah, his name's Hieronymus, but I call him Ronnie. He, um, you, you have him and his sister now, right? Yeah. <laughs> and how's it going? I just, I knew, I knew it was like only, <laughs> it would be like 30 seconds until we started talking about cat. I know. <laughs> like, we try to prepare ourselves to not get into that zone, but I think it's inevitable because I also have two cats. Right. And we love What them. are they doing now? <laughs> They're locked out of the room, so they don't mess with stuff. They're locked but, out of their room? Of but out of this room. Oh, okay. So they didn't I, come in. I knew they would bother me. Yeah. Aw. But. Um, well, feel uh, free to, you know invite them in at some point yeah, okay so are we supposed to be talking about music yeah we are let's let's get to okay. that um okay. so I, I do have some questions for you um and i was going to ask you specifically about <laughs> about mountains um due to um, the reissue are okay. you would you like some questions about mountains do you sure. feel prepared to answer some of those um oh, oh sure Sarah. <laughs> Okay, great, great, that's good, because that's what I've got here. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna read on my screen here. Um, and I wanted to ask you about, um, first of all, the recording of the record and where you recorded it and with who, and like, who was it that played on it? I think I know the answers to who played on it, but I don't think I know a lot about where and where and when, and also okay. how, like, yeah. Um, and also kind of like what was happening in your life at the time, like what, what oh, were you doing? <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, give me the, the, epic, <laughs> the epic tale. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that record was like, um, let me see. I guess I was in this band, Helium, and I didn't really, I wasn't sure if we were gonna do, Helium, it was, I didn't know what was going on. It was like 1998, I guess, and I just was writing a bunch of songs. It didn't seem like Helium was ready to make a record. Um, and also the songs I was writing were pretty big, like, I guess they weren't really rock songs anymore. For I just had gone into a different zone and was like really, really spending a lot of time in my own head and like journaling and like, uh, I don't know. Well, it's not like I don't, don't, I'm not always in my own head, but I think I really was at that point. And uh, I don't know, the songs just sounded pretty bare. And anyway, so I started jamming with my friend Christina Files, who you met actually, I think, remember when we all went out for any, sorry, Talk House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over, when I was up uh, seeing you in New York. Yeah, yeah, we okay. all hung out at that um, Five Leaves place. Right. Um, yeah, so she and I hung out one summer and just played music a bunch and um in her she lived in this big giant um in boston there used to be a lot of like warehouse like baltimore 
a lot warehouses that have artist spaces in them. So she lived in downtown Boston in this gigantic warehouse and we could play there and we ended up just recording, which recording ourselves, which um, it's weird to say now because everybody records themselves now, but at that point it was a little more rare. It was much more rare to be right. like, we're just doing this record ourselves. There was two of us and in her loft and recorded on a tape with on tape and um we did use a little bit of early pro tools but um mostly just on tape in her loft and I, I like some of the songs you can really hear like the gigantic space in the loft because we <laughs> would put like room mics around and stuff so we just hung out one summer and took our time and recorded a bunch of stuff um, you, in your mind yeah. at that time, did you know you were going to be making a solo record or were you just kind of just recording for the sake of recording? Oh, no, I, 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 uh, I was pretty sure. Yeah, no, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm making a solo record because um, it didn't seem like Haley was going to ready to make a record. And um, yeah, it just ended up being super bare and minimal and like, I don't in a way it was sort of actually there was like one version of the record that I ended up like I ended up not using like a whole bunch of stuff and um because I wasn't happy with it and that actually um I couldn't find the songs for a really long time that I, I thought I'd lost them and it turns out they were just like the original tape was actually in storage at Matador but I literally <laughs> thought for I don't know how long 20 years or whatever that I lost the tape and I didn't have this. so I, I was like because I, I thought it was like existed on that so it was like asking Christina and like Bob the guy who mixed it and Matador like do you guys have that dad and no one had it turns out we found it it was in storage on tape but anyway so that was kind of exciting <laughs> so that's good <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was just there all along. But anyway, so those songs are going to be on it now. Oh, and that's I'm awesome. Excited because I actually think that they're my favorite ones. Does that ever happen to you when you like, um, do you ever like write a song and think it sucks and then come back to it later and go like, that was pretty good or record or like was something you record or? I mean, I think there have been a lot of songs that I feel like are kind of throw away at the time like where I'm just messing around and starting to write something and then I don't uh -huh. go back to it necessarily but then I like I'll do a lot of recordings on my phone just messing around oh yeah and yeah. um sometimes I'll go back through and just listen to all those like little voice memos and then uh -huh. I'll find something that I thought sucked and kind of go from there with it but I wouldn't say yeah. that like there have been completed songs that I that I thought that sucked and that I went back to but definitely ideas you so you do find ideas on your voice messages that you like that you had forgotten about or that you uh didn't like at the time um both okay that's yeah. pretty good yeah um, but you know it's it it's normally just like little pieces um but it, something might catch my ear maybe you like with whatever it is that i'm kind of like feeling or going through at the time like maybe uh -huh. I, I think i write really emotionally like that's yeah that's I was gonna ask you about that. um because when i listen to your music that really comes through to me like because you create this kind of really strong vibe i feel like does that am i right in saying that yeah i mean <laughs> <laughs> that's how i hear it yeah i mean i think that's really cool that that's what you hear um okay. i think that you know, I don't think that I'm ever like going about it to necessarily create like right. um, like a like, for instance, in this album, it's not like I went through and tried to like make everything sound a certain way. Yeah. Or that, you know, we did as a group. But um, I get it. I yeah. think that like, you know, a lot of the songs on this record are about death or loss in some way. And so I think that um, the emotion when writing is very intentional, like putting that emotion into the song or that yeah. into the song. Uh -huh. So I think that the fact that all of them kind of have a certain theme maybe makes it the album a little bit more cohesive in that sense. You mean like um, the record has a theme or each song? I mean, the record doesn't necessarily have a theme or I didn't really set out right. 
to have it be a theme, but I think there was just a lot of stuff that was coming up in my life at the time and like um, things that I were think that the things that I were thinking about, like in terms of death or loss or like um, heartache, like all these things. But I think the main thing that ended up coming through in the songs that ended up on the record are like death and loss. And yeah. so I think that they have a certain, when I'm writing about that, I guess there's a certain feel. Yeah. So I, mean, I get it. I mean, yeah. Um, well, definitely translate in, it translates in the sound as well as the lyrics and stuff. But, Good. Um, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Um, yeah. I feel like there's like, or it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to get it wrong. But yeah, there's sort of like a, uh, I don't know, I, that translates, I think. There are, all the songs kind of have a, a vibe, um, which I, I feel like that's not an easy thing to make happen. It kind of have to have like, kind of like chemistry with your bandmates and stuff for that to happen, I think. Yeah, I think that was something that was really interesting about the way that we um, worked on this new record. So I think uh -huh. on the first record, I had a lot of songs that had just been in my back pocket for a long time. And then, you know, I met my bandmates and we started putting things together and then made the record. Um, but I think that with this one, we, it was very much more of a collaborative effort. So, you know, coming in with songs, but then working on arrangements and compositions and um, some of the soundscapes and like describing to them what the songs were about um, mm -hmm. as we were making them so that we kind of got that feeling into them. And I, I think that was like, we definitely found a chemistry and um, just kind of locked in with each other in um, mm -hmm. an emotional sense. And we're able to kind of mm -hmm. get that out and, and make them into the songs, which you know, I'm very thankful for like Christina and, or sorry, not Christina, Christian and um, Andrea, they're just awesome. And I feel so lucky to be playing with them and have found these people that, you know, we just all work so well together. That's amazing. It's, it's not easy to do, you know? To yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's definitely not, you know, I've had experiences in my past where it's not always been like that you know yeah and, and it's hard to to find people to play with that you also can get along with and so i you know yeah. i think we really all just trust each other that's awesome and, and, you know kind of counting on each other a lot um for a lot of things outside of music as well so it's, yeah it's been really nice. nice yeah um wait let me i have a whole thing of questions okay so can, <laughs> um oh yeah I want to know about, wait, oh my god, my cat, did you hear my cat? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, um, um, oh yeah, what kind of tunings do you use? <laughs> um, I am using one tuning and one tuning only currently, and that's just dropping down to the old D-A-D-G-A-D, -A -D, which... Wait, 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 D-A-D... D-A-E-A-D. The old, oh, dude, um, that's the same dad, dad. Dad. Yeah, I use the same one except for the last, the first strings in E. Ah, okay. But I guess that's the common alternate tuning, but, um, but still, that's pretty cool. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah, it, it's kind of, you know, I don't know, it, it's weird because like going back to standard tuning now, it's like, I find myself being a little bit lost. Like I should sure. probably go back to standard tuning, tuning and play a lot more than I do. Yeah, uh, um, I, yeah, I went through that actually. Um, it's weird. I mean, I did, I only played in that tuning forever. And then when I started teaching guitar, I had to go back to standard tuning and it, it was weird. Um, yeah. But, uh, and then it was really weird when it went back to the other tuning, but um, it's, I don't see any reason to be in standard tuning. If, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. you've done plenty. You yeah, totally. Anymore, you know? Um, so that's just, that's just all I have to say about that. Yeah. I mean, but now I like pretty much 
Most, I don't know, I'm doing like both now, I guess. But um, yeah, what the hell? I mean, like, okay, so I've been taking, I've been, well, I just started, as you know, studying the lute. Yes. <laughs> um, uh -huh. and I, yeah. <laughs> and it's great. I love it. But, um, but I, I, one thing is that there's so many, there were so many different kinds of lutes and different tunings and different amounts of strings and shit. It's like, well, I, it's weird that guitars, like people only tune guitars one way. So, or, you know, in the past, whatever, how many hundred years we've only been you know, using standard tuning because mm -hmm. that wasn't the case before as much, I guess. Anyway. Right. Um, but anyway, so, so it's good. All I'm saying is like, why have, why play standard tuning? Like, <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah. I, 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 I think about it. Like, why don't people play in like, like totally weird tunings more? I guess it's hard to know what you're doing, but yeah, it, it's good. It's good to not play in standard tuning. Yeah, I feel inspired now to just tune to something completely obscure. I know, and so do I, and then I'll try it, and then it'll be really awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, that yeah. was like, we should, we awful. should start a band where we don't tell each other even what tuning we're in, and yeah. we just try. It would be absolute idea. chaos. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's a bad idea. Don't, I'm, I'm not. Well, no, the reason why it's good is because you can't, you don't know what you're doing, so it forces you to listen, right? Like, you know? Yeah, it's true. Because you're not like, this is a D chord. It's like, well, what does this sound like? Mm -hmm. um, anyway, but then like, you can do some boring ass shit with like weird tunings too. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's more important to just like hear cool stuff in your head if you can. Or try to do the stuff you hear in your head. I don't know. <laughs> There's okay. no answer. I have a couple of questions for you based on okay. um, that and talking about the tunings. Um, and, and you're talking about, you know, going from helium to the solo stuff and then back to other bands and things like that. And talking about your process, like with your tunings and stuff like that. But how do you think that your writing style has evolved or changed over the years? And um how does the type of music you're playing affect your writing process or approach this is so serious <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote that one ahead of time <laughs> oh um wait i'm sorry we see it okay so how has it changed over the year or like how have the songs changed over the yeah, years like okay. how do you i mean just in general like your writing process like let's say from helium to where you are now like, do you feel like your process has changed? And do you feel like your process changes based on the style of music that you're playing? Oh, I, I don't know. Um, um, okay, well, let's see if I can think of anything interesting to say. <laughs> <laughs> or we can skip that and I can, we can come back to it. Um, hold on. Um, yeah, okay, so the biggest change is that, uh, well, I, okay, so I played in the um, alternate tuning forever, not forever, that's not, so for like six years or seven years, and then I had this thing where I just like, uh, had done, I did like four solo records, and um, they <clears throat> progressively sold less and less, and I was making no money, and I, <laughs> the last tour I went on, um, like, was like pretty fun, but pretty depressing um and I I do remember having you know just just losing a little bit of money on the tour and like sleeping on people's floors and mm -hmm. get, getting to the point where like I remember one night being like maybe if we ask from the stage if anyone has a place to stay <laughs> it, and then that and then uh, yeah I just was like the light went off and I was like what the fuck am I doing right I do this anymore? um and then I wanted to just not <clears throat> not do music anymore because it was too hard um because it was just you know i wasn't making money and it was just like anyway so i i just it's like everything burned to the ground pretty much with my uh with my creative process and i went into a hole and like i started teaching guitar lessons and like um 
I wasn't sure what I was going to do next. So anyway, so then when I came back to music, which was only a few years later, really, but um, I, I was burnt. I couldn't not approach it from the same place because I was so, I, you know what? I think I was just so, something sad that yeah. it was just so hard. And like, you know, it's just fucking hard. It's hard to put yourself out there so hard. Yeah. Really, you know, you don't think of, sometimes it feels like it's not, sometimes it feels like it is. It's just, it really fucking is. I think the older I've gotten, the more I've realized it's just fucking hard to put yourself out there. Yeah. You know, like it's so, you're so vulnerable. When I was in my twenties, I don't know. I just didn't fucking think about it. I was too like, you know, different brain space almost like more manic or something mm -hmm. i was just like i don't know i'm just making this shit and like gonna go on tour and blah well, it's, it's easier scary. when you're in your 20s to go and tour and be doing all that stuff too and i think is I, I mean i don't know if that was the case for you but you know I, I would imagine that like you know in my experience touring in the 20s is way different than touring as you get older and like yeah to do more things yeah, yeah, to yeah feel burnt out or whatever it's just true oh totally that's part of it too what was there something um that brought you back to music again after all those years was there something yeah i just got bored i mean i i was like teaching and just hanging out in dc and um i tried uh you know i don't know i just was like i didn't know what i was gonna do next um and um and then I just realized, like, this is super boring not being, you know, not working on a record. I just don't know what else I want to do, really. So I ended up um, doing more stuff. But but I, I guess what I was saying was when I came back to being, you know, my guitar, I couldn't do that tuning anymore. I like, oh, oh, I, well, first of all, I guess I was playing in that wild slag band that I did, but I couldn't play an alternate tuning in that band. So I just started playing standard tuning and um, just approaching music in a different way. Like I could thought way more about like, what does this sound like? Like what, what would someone else hear? And I never asked me, myself those questions before. I only thought about what do I, have to get out of me you know mm -hmm. so um I just more I was like more approaching it as a craftsperson when I came back to it um and then I was in that phase for a while like I would say I don't know I think I'm just getting out of that phase and back into like what do I feel which feels awesome good yeah I was gonna say it, yeah. ask if you missed that because I know for oh, me, totally. like, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's like, I have to process things through music. I feel like that's the only thing that I have that, um, it, it's so unique in that way that like, I, you know, any anxieties or depression or anything like that, that I have, I always feel better whenever I'm playing music or I'm channeling that and putting it into music. Um, yeah. so I would imagine, you know, not, not doing that for a while. If, if you felt the same way, do you feel the same way? that does it, does it um, kind of heal you or do you feel like it's oh yeah necessary no, absolutely. For you? it's the only reason to do it um yeah i don't know i mean uh right i mean it's the only reason why we do this right it's yeah. like a, it's some uh, like kind of process that helps your brain like it's like dreaming i guess like kind of a similar thing right like mm -hmm. yeah everything um, else clicks off and for me yeah anyway, it's like you know you can just be in this moment and exist without having the thoughts you know you turn your brain off for a little while and yeah then things just happen um, so it's like you're saying it's like meditation kind of yeah yeah i would say that i mean it um, definitely helps me in that way yeah mm -hmm. um when did you figure that out? You um, I think I, I think I figured that out um, as I started to write songs. Yeah. Wait, I, that's one of my questions. Do you remember, like, when you? Okay. So, well, first of all, when did you get your first guitar? <laughs> um, okay. Well, I, I got my 
my own first guitar was not for a while, but I, in high school, I had a friend whose father had a acoustic guitar that was just uh -huh. sitting and not being used. And I convinced him to let me borrow it. And so it was oh, just wow. like an old rickety, uh, like arch top. And I got that and an I, arch top. yeah. <laughs> Wait, like a, um, an arch top, like an electric? No, arch? it's an acoustic, like an acoustic arch top uh, um, okay. like with the, with the S holes. That's so cool. Yeah. It was like all wow. rickety and yeah. I, I had taken piano lessons when I was like eight or nine and it didn't really stick. Um, I mean, yeah. I love music and I love listening to music and everything, but I, I kind of always wanted to play the guitar, but I think that I, I don't know. I don't know if it was like not seeing women play guitar when I was a young kid growing up in like middle of nowhere, Indiana. Yeah. Um, or, you, <laughs> you yeah. know, so yeah. I just don't know if I thought that it wasn't for me. Like, I just never thought about having my own guitar until I saw that one. And then I was like, wait a second. And so the funny story about this though is that I bring that guitar home and um, as I'm trying to to tune it, I don't know how to tune a guitar, so I'm like tuning to middle C on the piano and trying wow. to tune C D up, and I just like start breaking all of the strings. Oh, no. So that I was just like, whatever like remaining strings were there, I managed to just play around on and like teach myself songs by ear, like listening to MTV and. Um, oh my God, really? So, yeah, I was I was doing that for like maybe a year or so yeah, and at some point along the line my brother got a guitar uh -huh. and he showed me some basic chords and then I was just like learning that and playing those by ear kind of and that's, but, that's your brother, I, but your brother how did your brother learn chords I don't I actually don't know um uh -huh. he's quite a bit older than me like I have two older brothers okay. but this brother was like five years older than me so he must have been uh -huh. like you know, 18 years old or something like that. And, um, it, cause the guitar wasn't around long cause then he went to college and, um, and then I didn't have a guitar. And then I, I think I was maybe just playing on that old one again. I don't really remember it, but I, I do recall that there was that moment where I learned some guitar chords. Then I went yeah. to university and borrowed like, um, somebody's guitar that was in the hall of my dorm. Uh huh. Um, a friend of mine, and then th that same year I got my first guitar. So it was like my first year of university that I had my own, and I think that's probably when I wrote my first song. Oh wow! Like around then. Wait, what were you? I'm kind of curious. What were you playing? Do you remember what you were playing before on that first guitar when you broke all the strings and stuff? What I mean, you? I remember listening to a lot of like Nirvana Unplugged. Uh huh. <laughs> I like playing, playing along with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, lots, lots of Nirvana, lots of grunge. I was a real grunge kid. Oh, um, grunge. Wait, because you were like, this is like the early '90s when you were in high school, probably, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and then when you when you got your what kind of guitar did you get in college? It ended up just being um like a an old acoustic like K that my parents got. Whoa. These are some pretty cool guitars, though, that you had just, yeah. uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, I've, I've always kind of, like, had these really weird off-brand sort of guitars. Like, I've, I've always, like, thought, I'm going to invest in a guitar now, like, you know? And I, I, I mean, I just went recently to try to buy a nicer guitar, and then I'm just like, it, they don't sound to me like what I wanted to sound what, like. So what were you looking at when you... I was you... looking at um, some Jazz Masters, which I still yeah. think that I may want to get. But uh -huh. I haven't found the right one yet. Um, um, were you looking at the the new new jazz masters? No, or? I was looking at some older ones. Oh, they're so expensive now. Because no. I got a jazz master in the early '90s, um, but yeah, now they're like. I mean, I don't really know. I'm sure you could. Anyway, not like but, uh, older, older. Like I don't think I can afford the older, older. Oh no! I like, know. Yeah, like yeah. The guitars are just like. They're insanely expensive. I mean, mm -hmm. anyway, but, um, um, but wait, so, so, okay. So this guy in the background, is that your main guy oh, over there? This over here, you can see this? Yeah. Um, no, that's not the main one. Okay. That was, um, that's the one I used for the first record. 
and that's like an old off off brand like i think it, it came out of like the tesco factory or something in japan yeah the only okay. marking on it says made in japan on the back um, oh yeah great but um it has really nice gold foil pickups which i really really like um oh. it only has the one pickup so it, it has a lot of cool sounds um yeah that get out of it but then i got curious to try to get another guitar similar to that one because i panicked and thought what if this guitar ever breaks right i don't have something like this so i started looking around and i i got on ebay and i found um something that was made in the same factory or presumed factory and uh -huh. i got that and I, it came and it sounds different <laughs> but it's now my main guitar um, yeah and that's okay. like an old Kawhi. um oh. it's like an s160 and as i as i did some research into it it looks like um hound dog taylor played a similar one but with the four oh, cool. pickups and this one has two Whoa. so um but it was it, you know when i when i got it on ebay i thought i was gonna get screwed over by whoever it was that sold it to me because it wasn't shipping on time. I tried to request tracking information and you know, they, the tracking information wasn't lining up. So they sent a picture of the label. You couldn't see the tracking information, but the only thing that I could make out was the return address um, name said JK. And I was like, <laughs> JK, just kidding. <laughs> this is awful. And so I was getting ready to file a claim and then it showed up and there, there it was. <laughs> So yeah, that's what I have now. <laughs> the Joker sent you your guitar. Mm -hmm. um, that, it sounds cool. Yeah, thank you. You know, I, I love these old guitars. It's like, you, you know, I kind of think if I can find the right one, I think it's hard in the sense that like if something goes wrong or it breaks, then how am I gonna find that sound again? But you know, I, I really love the sounds that I'm getting out of them. So yeah. Wow. Seems yeah. Fun. Uh, and wait, what's your amp that you're using live? Um, I'm using a Music Man 50 watt head okay. and then an Ampeg um, 212 cabinet. Oh, cool. Yeah. It sounds cool. Yeah. Um, what, what is your go-to guitar these days? Oh. That's the lute. Yeah. I have it right over there, actually. I'm borrowing a loop from my loop teacher, but I'm going to buy a loop from this guy in Turkey. Oh, wow. Because that's where you get the cheap loops, apparently, because loops are, like, pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. They're, um, like, $2,500. And it's like, I, I'm playing loop, but it's not my main instrument right now. <laughs> it might be someday. Um, yeah. But um, I didn't... I don't have the money to just throw down $2,500 on the loop. So, but anyway, yeah, apparently um, this guy in Turkey is pretty good. So I'm going to order from him. So only That's 700 awesome. bucks. Um, I am playing, um, I'm going back to my jazz master these days. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the guitar I feel the most comfortable on. Um, like, you know what? Um, is so tr true. I, well, I am like, um, I'm thinking a lot. Anyway, I don't know if this is good for the podcast. It's just like every guitar is so different, you know, like, mm -hmm. especially the bridge area, I find, right? Isn't that true? Right. Like, it's just weird with like guitar. Everyone's always talking about the left hand all the time. And like, I don't know, I, I never learned too much in, in rock when, you know, enroll about what to do with your right hand in classical they're very specific about it but uh i don't know uh so anyway my guitar i'm saying is my hand's super adjusted to that jazz master like i just mm -hmm. know and like anyway but i like that one and then i i got a um cole guitar that i really like it's all cool um it's it's um he he built it actually like my really i'm super lucky he built it for me and oh my gosh. Um, sounds fucking amazing so if i'm ever like recording i just pretty much use that guitar the whole time because it just sounds great um and then my friend chris built a really cool guitar um i should like go get them and show you but they're amazing yeah. <laughs> um and then so for electric sets about it i'm trying to get a good a good oh i just got a 12 string that i rate oh nice um, it sounds so good 
Do you find that when you're playing on a new guitar that you will write new stuff or write different types of songs? Like sometimes if I pick yeah. up a, sometimes if I pick up a different guitar, then suddenly I'm playing something that I would never play if I was playing. A, That's the best feeling. That is the best feeling. It's like the most magical feeling mm -hmm. in life. <laughs> I feel like that happens to me so much more rarely now, but it used to happen when I was younger a lot. Like I would just go in a guitar store and then like be the annoying person who's like playing. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm like, that's really trying to like, like listen to the ideas I'm getting, you know? <laughs> but now like, I don't know, it just doesn't happen. Maybe it's cause I'm just older and like, I don't know. But uh, that doesn't happen as um, as much. But I love that feeling. Um, wait, what were we talking about? Different. Oh, playing different instruments give you. Yes, yeah, some guitars. I feel like. Oh, I have this thing where I have certain guitars around just because they're okay. It's like one guitar. I have the silver tone. That's like super. Like I inherited it from a roommate in college somebody left it in our group house and it's I, I guess it's worth something now but it's super junky and like i just like had it around because i i could the only guitar i could write songs on forever yeah. and part of it is because it's junky i can i'm not worried about it and i'm just like whatever this is a piece of junk i'm just gonna like play around on it but then there's mm -hmm. you know like other guitars that I have never written a song on and I can't, and it's just like, they're just, they don't write songs, you know? Mm -hmm. Like there's this, this one uh, guitar I got when my um, couple, like the first one, XX did the first XX record. And I just, I don't know, it's just a weird thing. I think, I think it was one, I think, you know what, it, like it has this feeling like it just was city, it was never played. It was, I got it off eBay and it's just like, it just doesn't have the mojo. There's, I don't know what the hell is the, the deal with it. I, I don't know. It just doesn't um, write songs. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it does have that. <laughs> yeah, and then other guitars do. Like, you pick yeah. it up and you're like, okay. I don't know, but okay, so speaking of writing songs, um, mm -hmm. you had mentioned something about writer's block. And also you had mentioned like having it during the pandemic. So should we talk about that? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about it. So wait, I can't remember exactly the question, but um, um, well, for, let me just ask you, um, in my own words. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever have writer's block? <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I have writer's block more often than not. Um, which, which feels <laughs> weird, you know, being a musician and um, being in a band and and you know, having these expectations to write songs, it, it just is, um, it, it's weird to have it a lot, but I do find myself yeah. having it a lot. And I think that it's, um, for me, I, I'm not quite sure how to work through that. Um, you know, I, I've seen people like, actually, you know, there was, a, there was a time that I was living at your house for a few months back, back in the day. <laughs> and, um, Thank you again I for that. I was living in the <laughs> One time I was living here. Did you know I was there? <laughs> um, <laughs> but one thing I always admired is yeah. that, like, every single day you were playing guitar. Like, you made it. Yeah, like, every, every day it seemed like you made a point and you were, like, going down what? to the basement and playing guitar. Was I teaching lessons? Yeah, you were teaching that's, lessons. That's what um, I Sarah. But I, I was not yeah, playing guitar for myself. You don't find yourself doing that every day. It was just that time period. Do you think that you were I play guitar all the time, but mostly for teaching. Okay. So, which yeah. is not the same thing as right. playing myself. Um, sorry. I don't know yeah. what I'm going here. <laughs> okay, okay, so I was, was going to say, like, I felt really inspired by that. And so I was like, oh, maybe I should be playing guitar every day and... You know, I've heard people say that to work through it, and it, it just doesn't work for me. I think maybe the type of writer or the type of music I'm making doesn't really work for that. Like, I have to be in the right head mentally. Or me too, dude. I 
like literally okay it's like everything you're saying i completely agree with i've gone for like a couple years without writing a song like i always have writer's block perpetually Mm -hmm. and then when it lifts like i guess i don't even like i don't know it's just weird but i completely understand and yeah and like um i do i do need to play guitar more for myself it's some it's something that i just yeah it's so important but like yeah generally since i'm teaching it's like it's weird it's a weird thing you know it's like it's not the same thing at all it's like teaching a craft uh, not being creative um but i just find like if i do it's just weird it's weird it's weird to like not allow yourself to do the one thing that you actually really love love. yeah uh, but you know, it's really important to not do it sometimes. I agree. You know, if you're not feeling it, there's like this mysterious connection that I don't really understand of like how the stuff work, how the creative stuff works. Um, but if you know, but if you have a process and it works, like fucking with it is like the wrong thing to do. <laughs> like, you know, I'm just saying like forcing yourself to play a guitar, even though it doesn't feel right is like probably not a good idea right yeah Um, I think that I have have you found in your experience that like when something suddenly clicks that a lot comes out like when you 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 write multiple songs at once whatever like say the writer's block lifts are you able to write several songs in a row oh that has happened to me does that happen to you yeah yeah yeah. So you, so, it'll be like suddenly your brain is in a creative zone, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, but it's just like trying to when that moment hits, making yourself like just then going and capturing it and doing all you can with that moment in the moment um, is, I think, you know, essential to being able to continue to be productive. But it's it's hard to you know get to that spot, and I, I wish I knew like what that switch is to be able to turn on and and break through it. But I think that, you know, I think, you know, you're asking about the pandemic writing right now. And I think that it's hard. And I think I've heard this from a lot of people that it's real, people are finding it very difficult to be creative and write. And I think that's understandable, totally understandable. It's like, everything is just too much. And I think, we're all just trying to do what we can to maintain um, and like keep our mental health up and um, yeah, you know, and I think that sometimes that comes with playing music. Like we've had, um, we've gotten back to doing some practices and you know, as hard as everything feels and as like depressed or anxious as I might be going and making myself do these practices. Once I walk away from that, I'm like, that felt great. You know, and I, I feel rejuvenated and things feel good. So, um, but I mean, in terms of writing, we've got some stuff, but like, I've only been able to like bring one new song so far, um, during this. That's pretty good. Yeah. Not, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could do more. Cause you know, I have all this time. There's all this time just to spend. Hello. I don't know. How, how are you finding your pandemic? I mean, I'm, Jesus Christ, it's such a weird world. I'm I'm fine, but like, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's, we're all going to be, we've all gone through a lot. Like, we're all going to have learned things about ourselves. And like, um, so, I mean, I guess that's the positive side, but yeah, it's a struggle for everyone, obviously, you know, um, I don't know. I've had, I've had a rough, uh, I've had a really rough, like, four years, I guess. I've had, like, both my parents, you know, my dad's advanced dementia, my, you know, my brother's stuff going on. So, basically, a lot of family stuff that I'm caretaking constantly, Mm -hmm. and big relationship ending also. Mm -hmm that's been super rough and then like that so that stuff was all going on and then um 
yeah and it's just, just the this country has been in such a weird place my god yeah. such a weird time right now it's really really weird it's really it's, it's hard to know how to to deal and i don't think anyone yeah. has the answers you know um but yeah i think uh yeah, i don't know yeah well i think we're all going to come out of this stronger yeah i mean i i hope that like i think you know it, it's so concerning um about venues and um places to play and like touring and all of that stuff you know we wanted to tour on this record and yeah we can't um and yeah oh, it's a bummer who knows who knows like when we'll get back to it and then if we do like what's How gonna be there to play you know and yeah. i am really thankful for um having this record come out so you know this our record came out on broker's tip records which is bob nastanovich mm -hmm. uh, his his little nonprofit label which is growing and it's just it's pretty awesome how that happened because i we had just finished our record and had just started sending it out places to see if somebody would put it out Mm -hmm. And you know, we were feeling we we're feeling really hopeful and everything, and then all of a sudden this pandemic hit, and we're like, nobody's gonna put out any records, you know? Like this record is it's just dead in the water. Like there's nothing okay. we can do. We yeah. just spent all this time working on this, and we're so excited to put it out, and just didn't feel like it was gonna happen. So we were trying to figure out what to do, and at that point I was just feeling so sad, and I was just like. Um, I just I wanted it to sh I wanted to share it with Bob because he had um, heard our first record and played it on his podcast that he does called Three Songs Podcast and he'd been you know really supportive and um, complimentary and so I was just like I know he liked the first record so I just wanted to have somebody hear it you know and it was as simple as that I was just reached out to him and I was like hey you have this new record I would just love to share it with you and. Um, so I, I sent it to him and then later that day he wrote me right back and he was like, I'd love to put this out on Broker's Tip. And I was just like, did not expect it at all. And honestly, like it, it saved us all, um, in a certain way because we had that to work on, you know, and they're just right. like, being able to, to pour ourselves into, um, gearing up for the record release and getting everything moving on that and, um, working on artwork and all of that, you know, it just, it gave me something to occupy my mind and you know i think yeah. and andrea too um it was mm -hmm. good for all of us to be able to have that little bit of hope so i'm you know really thankful yeah and, um uh, have a lot of gratitude for for that and yeah this out oh that's awesome yeah. he's he's the best he's and you had a you know from like some touring is that right yeah from uh yeah he opened for pavement um on a bunch of tours yeah uh, but he's just like the nicest guy ever so that's awesome yeah. um he loves horses yeah right <laughs> <laughs> no. awesome. yeah um uh, yeah it's good it's good that 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 was happening um yeah it's been such a crazy weird time for people mm -hmm. <sighs> So, okay, so your your yeah. record is out, again, reissued with the extra, yeah. extra songs. Oh, Ronnie. Hi, Ronnie. <laughs> he's just chilling. He doesn't normally let me pick him up, but he's pretty chill right now. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he's, <laughs> I don't know what I was just talking about. Um, he, not he, my record is coming out in January. Mountains is getting reissued, yeah. Okay. And I, yeah, I was going to go on tour and I guess it would have been, you know, well, originally it was going to be out in the fall and we're going to tour in the fall. Then it was like out in January, tour in January, then that got booked in the spring again. And I, I don't know, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, oh, is it, it coming out that, on vinyl also? Huh? Vinyl and digitally? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's on vinyl um a new package and um and the unreleased 
uh, recordings are on there too now, which I'm really happy about because they were lost. <laughs> That's going to be so cool. <laughs> Forever. Yeah. And, um, it feels really good. It's like putting, um, it's like losing your leg and like being able to put your leg back on. It's like a that <laughs> dream. That's a little extreme. Anyway, it feels like um, putting the, something back together that was broken or something. You know, it just feels like, okay, good. Like, I felt the same thing when I did a helium reissue. It was like really good to get all this stuff that had been like on seven inches or cassettes or something, get it on vinyl and, or, you know, in a, that felt really good. Yeah, I'll be really excited to get that because, you know, I, I've been re-listening to Mountains um, over the past, like, week. And I just, one thing that really stands out to me about that is uh, that I really love about the record is just how dark and, like, mysteriously intimate it is. Um, and I, I liked hearing you talk about the recording and, like, the spaces you were recording in. And that makes me really excited to listen to it on vinyl to, you know, actually be able to hear those, yeah. those spaces and um, listen to it in that format as well. Thank Especially you. I didn't know that you knew that record. Yeah, I, I really, I really love it. And, um, you know, I think that was one of your first solo records that I had heard and then got really into. And Really? Just, yeah. Really. It's, Thank it's you, great. It's a great record. I don't, it's like weird. It's, uh, it's definitely the record that I have been the most, uh, uncomfortable about mm -hmm. for my whole life after doing it um I think because it it was um I don't know just people who reacted to it in a really weird way at the time um it was like some people got it and a lot of people didn't like it you know so uh well I, I don't know I, it just, you know, it just like, it was one of those, it was definitely an, my first experience of like being totally, well, first of all, I wasn't even sure if I liked it, <laughs> to be honest, like, if I could go back, I would definitely change a bunch of stuff, but I always feel, I mean, I've always felt that about most things I've done, but that in particular, because it was very raw and like, I don't know, I just wasn't, I didn't like, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, I... I, I, I mostly don't like the um, sequence of the songs. I put a lot of crap on there. Sorry, I keep swearing. I put a lot of stuff on there. I didn't, I probably shouldn't have left a bunch of songs off. I, some, some songs I really like, some songs like, I didn't even put it on there. What are, you, um, what are your, um, if you don't mind me asking, like, what are your favorite songs in there? I wonder if they're similar to what mine are or not. Uh -huh. My favorite songs, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I like all the ones with Christina playing, you know, like, um, like the viola song, um, mm -hmm. Hourglass They're Like, and per I like the like the last couple songs a lot. <laughs> um, it's hard to hear myself playing by myself, like without, I don't know, it's just like too much. I like the ones that are like with drums and stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love it. I, I, it's, I'm sure it was difficult to have people react to it so strangely after you made yourself so vulnerable and like made such an intimate and like, yeah nice record and you really put yourself uh, out there so yeah it's like, like you know, I, think the time, I think it got bad review on pitchfork and it was like uh or not i don't know they said something about i don't know what who cares it doesn't matter but um uh well, it's, a, it's a great but record. anyway that's not the only reason it's also that i didn't wasn't really happy with it and yeah. anyway um the lyrics are also very revealing in a weird way so mm -hmm. it's a record that I always felt uh, vulnerable about and um, actually to be honest like I don't know kind of almost embarrassed for for years about it and only recently have I been able it does it make more sense like to me and to other people I think I think it didn't fit in in the time like yeah. first of all it wasn't I don't know. It wasn't cool to be, well, that's not true. I don't know. What, people weren't doing like uh, quiet, vulnerable music. It was the 90s and it was like, mm -hmm. you know, bands were loud and aggressive, but there, I mean, of course there were, there were, there was quiet music too. Well, you're just ahead of your time. <laughs> huh? You're ahead of your time. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, there was plenty of other people doing quiet music too. It just wasn't as 
normal, I guess. You know, it wasn't like the norm. Um, anyway, but the thing is now that we have the internet and people listen to all kinds of music, it just sounds so normal, that record. But at the time it didn't. It sounded just really bare and like demos or something. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, I love, um, I love the song, The Golden Dove. That one has been in my head so much. That one's Oh, The great. Golden Fruit? Wait, the golden fruit. what sounds like the Renaissance Fair one? No. Um, no, not that one. It's the one that... Um, Wait, let me grill you. Um, hey, you're, wait, you're walking okay, through the birch trees and the lady whispers to you. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one's great. And, um, and I fire myself. That little piano hook. So good. Is that an actual piano or is that a keyboard? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actual piano. Yeah, we've got Christina's roommate um, hired someone in to bring the piano on a um, pulley through the window. Wow. <laughs> it's like lifting up two or three gigantic stories into this huge window. And then and we spent, this is the kind of thing we did when we were making that record. We spent like four or five days tuning the piano ourselves. What? We just did everything ourselves. That's like, amazing. Record. It was like no help. It was just me and Christina hanging out. Like, she's amazing. I, I love her. She's so, she's so talented and great. But, um, but anyway, yeah, so we just were like, okay, how do you tune the piano? <laughs> so, lots of piano tuning. And then, you know what, I think we might have given up and gotten it tuned. But, um, you you but should anyway. try to tune it to a standard guitar tuning, opposite of me when I tune <laughs> my guitar to the piano. Oh, that's a cool idea. <laughs> a piano that's tuned. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea, Sarah. <laughs> I think you might have come up with a really cool new, like, genre <laughs> right now yes everything is piano tuning absolute chaos <laughs> um well I absolute guess we chaos probably wrap it up um hey if we ever start a band i think it should be called absolute chaos yes absolute chaos and everything <laughs> is just yeah, i think we've been talking for like five hours at this point <laughs> we've been definitely talking for like over an hour yeah we should probably <laughs> Wrap it up. We should probably let everyone <laughs> off the hook. <laughs> Thanks to anyone who's stuck around this long. Yeah, you guys are watching this. You get the prize. We're listening, yes. You get to hear all of the That's little cool. intricate details about that piano, which is really cool. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully we'll, we'll have stuck around long enough to hear that. Um, and I'm really excited to get Mountains on vinyl. And thanks for doing this. Yeah, Sarah. Yeah. I hope um, to see you in person before too long. I don't know when yeah, that will happen, but. Yeah, how do we do that? Oh know. my God, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold, stop. <laughs> stop the presses. Hold on. The prize of this, of waiting around to have watched this entire interview is that you now get to hear the story of what happened when Sarah and I went to Medieval Times restaurant <laughs> last year. <laughs> yes, please. Um, I I don't even know how to tell the story exactly. Of I what mean, happened. basically, our team was the best team. Yeah, they won the whole battle. We we won. We, we won the we, whole battle. We, uh -huh. we won the whole battle. Yeah, and mm -hmm. something incredible happened. Something incredible did happen. Yeah. Uh. Yes. The the night bestowed upon me his single rose. I felt <laughs> much like the bachelorette. Very, very <laughs> exciting. Real life bachelorette. It was really real amazing. life. I mean, I just saw him, night. I saw him scanning the audience and then I saw his eyes just like light up and he just <laughs> came towards you with his rose. <laughs> I mean, it just like made a beeline towards you. I uh, <laughs> like presented you with the rose. Wow. <laughs> so lucky. I I am you look are. forward to the time that we can go back to medieval times. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
That was like quite an experience. It was like really interesting. Those kids, like we were talking to them afterwards, and they all like, wait, I know the interview is an hour, but it's, <laughs> we're we're going strong. Um, <laughs> um, those kids, you know, like uh, they had like all trained to work there. They yeah, all like, they, wanted. We, they started, we like, yeah. thought that they were um, had been, you know, equestrian types. Uh, right. that have been, right. you know, on horses their whole right. lives, but apparently at medieval times they are just servers that work themselves up, work their way up to the knighthood. They do. They, work they them. ride they wild horses, them on horses amongst hundreds of people. <laughs> it's great. It's incredible. You never um, know what might happen. You never know what could come along your way in life. It's true. Like you could be riding a horse through a restaurant and 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 awarding people roses. It's true. Um, but I remember talking to those kids afterwards, and like a, at least we asked at least two of them, and they both were like, "No, I've always wanted to work here. I used to come here when I was growing up." And it was like, "Yeah, it's like their career path, which is cool." Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm jealous. Yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever makes you happy, you know, I say go for it. And you know, yeah. you, maybe if you want to go for it, you, do you think that you could be like, do they ever allow women to be knights? Is that something that we should figure out? And I don't know. What the, wait a second. You're right. None of the women, none of the knights were women, right? No, the, it was very patriarchal. There was, uh, the only woman in the entire mix was the queen, um, which is who they were fighting oh, yeah. for. All I remember is like, it was like, <laughs> that's like all I can understand. Except for the one man, except for the one man with some accent that we oh could not gosh. place. Wait, the guy who had been, was an actor. Yeah. The guy was like, um, yeah, I couldn't yeah. understand. Maybe I'm, I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. It was just the queen. What the he heck? I don't know. What the heck, Sarah? I like that. I like that quick sensor of hell to heck. Huh? I like your quick sensor of hell to heck. Um, yes. <laughs> um, I think that you make a good point, though, that it, um, yeah, I don't know. Why do they have, I mean, it's like medieval times restaurant. They don't need to, like, only have, like, be so specific about the genders of the knights. Right. I think this is something like, that we need to, like, about it. Get yeah, and maybe this is what we can uh, have be our next project in the quarantine. Yeah, what what? Get on that. Get on um, trying to diversify the the knighthood. Oh, do you? How about a protest? Yes. Would you like to stage a protest at medieval times <laughs> at Anne Arundel Mall? What was it? Anne Arundel Mall. <laughs> yeah, it was in in the mall. Yes, Anne Arundel. <laughs> You and I. Yes. Now that we got Trump gone, well, fucking like, oh, uh, you and I, our next uh, protest, because we, we've both, you know, been upset about the way of the world, but um, I think we should take on medieval times. I agree. Full heart. Okay. Um, Great. We'll make protest crowns instead of signs. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> anyway, well, all right, yeah, I'll continue. Me. Let's, I, I, way too long. you know, we'll brainstorm the center on and we'll talk again on a Zoom call, I'm sure soon. Um, some birthday party or okay. another, we'll, we will meet again back here on Zoom. I hope so. Me too. <laughs> I would like to see you not on Zoom soon. Yes. And also, you can cut off the whole the interview if it's too, you know, just cut it off. Okay, I'm going to cut it off. Because it's appropriate. Okay. <laughs> See you later, everyone. Thank you.